What's up guys, my name is Fran and welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, we're gonna be checking out the brand new AMD RX 5600 XT. More specifically though, we're gonna be checking out its performance when it comes to video editing in both Final Cut and DaVinci Resolve. All right, so this is actually the second time I'm recording this video, and that's because a few things have happened between about a week ago when I originally recorded the video and now. First, Apple came out with a new version of Catalina 10.15.3. When I originally recorded this video, I was using Catalina 10.15.2. And while the operating system did recognize the graphics card and it did seem to be operating, when you actually looked at the properties for the GPU, all it said was Navi Graphics. And that isn't necessarily the greatest of signs, but in 10.15.3, the operating system actually she recognizes it as the RX 5600 XT. And secondly, I foolishly forgot to update the BIOS on the 5600 XT in my first round of testing. Even though I was fully aware of the BIOS update that gave the 5600 XT about 15% boost in performance. Now, the reason why I'm mentioning all of this is because I'll probably throw all of those numbers up in the benchmarking results, and I'll do my best to label them appropriately. But just in case you're wondering why there might be a number of results for the same graphics card, this is why. Before we jump into the benchmarking results for Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve, which will heavily be done in Mac OS, I wanted to show you guys the raw performance performance of the 5600 XT. And in order to do that, I installed it in my test system and ran it in Windows. And in case anyone out there is wondering, here are the specifications for my test system. So it's sporting an ASRock Z390 motherboard, paired up with an Intel i9-9900K processor, overclocked to five gigahertz. The RAM is G-Skill Trident DDR4-3000, and the hard drive is a single Samsung 970 EVO, one terabyte NVMe SSD. And of course, for the sake of this test, the graphics card is the AMD RX 5600 XT. Now to get a little bit more specific, I chose the power color Red Dragon AMD RX 5600 XT. Now, of course, we all know there's a number of different 5600 XTs out there, and I chose this for a number of reasons, but mainly because of the nice and beefy cooler, the sleek design, and also the dual bio switch. Okay, so with all those technicalities finally out of the way, let's take a look at some of those benchmarking numbers. I found it extremely impressive at how much faster the 5600 XT was before and after the BIOS update. I guess AMD was really trying to avoid cannibalizing the market for the 5700, but that's a story for a whole other video. Okay, so now that we've seen those extremely impressive results in Windows, let's switch gears over to Mac OS and see how it does in video editing. Okay, so we switched gears and now I'm here in front of my Mac. And what I wanted to do was set up this testing scenario for you. For our workstation, we'll be testing on the brand new 16 inch MacBook Pro. It features 32 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, an Intel i9-9980HK 8-core processor, a 1TB NVMe SSD, and a built-in AMD Radeon Pro 5500M 4GB graphics card. And as a side note, I'll be doing a full video review on this beast of a mobile workstation coming up in the really near future, so be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that review. And in order to get the AMD RX 5600XC working with my laptop, I'll be whipping out old faithful my Sonnet EGFX breakaway box. And for my testing, I'll be cycling between the internal Radeon Pro 5500M graphics card, the AMD RX 5600 XT, and my Radeon RX 5700 XT. And as a disclaimer, for all three of these cards, I'll be skipping over the timeline scrubbing test because as expected with all three of these cards, I was able to smoothly scrub through 4K and even 6K 10-bit 422 footage shot on my Panasonic S1H. So with all of that out of the way, let's once again take a look at the numbers.
Okay guys, so now that we've seen all the numbers for the benchmarks, what's the verdict? So while we did see a slight increase in performance when using the 5600 XT, it wasn't always necessarily across the board. It had virtually no effect when exporting videos out to ProRes, which generally takes advantage of the CPU, and H.265, which generally takes advantage of a T2 chip if present. Now the one area that we did see a significant performance improvement was exporting videos out to H.264, at least prior to the BIOS update. However, with the wide adoption of the H.265 encoding format, especially if you have one of the newer Macs with the built-in T2 chip, exporting videos out to the HI264 encoding format just honestly doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Now it is possible that the performance of the 5600 XT would be much more impressive if it was plugged into, say, one of the native PCI Express slots in one of the newer Mac Pros. But I don't have one of those newer Mac Pros, so for now, a guy can only dream. But in my opinion, unless you're a creative professional whose livelihood depends on exporting HI264, the combined cost of the eGPU, plus the around $289 price tag of the AMD RX 5600 XT probably makes this entire setup not worth it. But as always, I'd love to know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Also, while you guys are down there, if you like this video, hit the like button. And if it's your first time to the channel, consider subscribing. Once again, guys, my name is Fran. Thanks for checking out this video, and I'll see you guys in my next one.